that international police army. In the reign of Aspasian, during the period when great masses of men were thoroughly subdued, crushed and broken of spirit, a peace palace was erected on the banks of Tiber, and the fantastic gospel of peace preached there and everywhere else by direct command of the government. At the same time, all Europe, also Eastern Asia and Ethiopia were taxed to the utmost limit and their inhabitants ruthlessly exploited by bonds and tributes. A small body of well-disciplined professional fighting men, police, was kept in readiness for putting down revolt. It was the usual custom to send the police belonging to one section of the empire to suppress rebellion in another. In this way, more than half the world was kept in peace and order by the great Roman international bankers. Mutiny was utterly impossible, because the common people were disarmed and watched closely by secret agents everywhere. No one dared to write or express himself in opposition to the central bureaucracy. This condition was called the Pax Romana, and the emperor, i.e. the central figurehead, was worshipped as the Prince of Peace, the Living God, etc. Thus the most absolute international terrorism known since the day of Ramses the Great and Belshazzar was cunningly reorganized and brought to systematic perfection under the loquacious pretense of establishing and preserving the peace. All men of lower mentality were officially taught to believe that the peace in itself was something noble and beautiful and godlike and benign, which is, of course, a mortal delusion and a profound fallacy. Men are born for strife and struggle as the sparks fly upwards and peaceful conditions are debasing and unnatural to them. It is also a sin and a shame, as well as a real sign of mental and moral degeneration for human beings to live in tranquility and to love peace and to pray for peace, when evil laws rob them of their possessions and evil judges deprive them of their liberties. Hence the peace propaganda that we now hear so much about is really an attempt to bring alive once more the worldwide extension of an old world, political terror, a terror that had to be destroyed with blood and fire and invasion. Already we have the peace palace in The Hague, built with money wrung by pitiless modern up-to-date users from the sweat and grime of servile and helpless populations. Already we have the private individual disarmed and powerless, while governments possess irresistible weapons of scientific offense. Already we have a fanatical peace apostle, subsidized by the users. Already our statesmen advocate an international police court, an international police force, to hold the world in awe and collect the vast money tributes. Still, like a spreading ulcer, which leechcraft may not cure, let your foul usance eat away the substance of the poor. Thus an ancient military and financial tyranny is upon us once more. It reaches out for our throats and pockets. Thus churches and governments and science combine for the further enslavement and exploitation of all mankind. Christ is my redeemer, I heard men rave and shout. But where is their redemption? What is it all about? The religion of the eagle and the serpent is the religion of the plains of Troy. We do not found a new religion. We revive the true one. This is not said for long heirs. To put your faith in political institutions is just as insane and unseemingly as to put your faith in religious institutions. Why then do you do it? What is the matter with you? What is the difference between the man who fools you from the pulpit and the other man who fools you from the platform? Both of them seek to obtain power of you, to rule your mind, control your property interests or labor power. Give the priest authority over you and he will skin you alive. Give the politician authority over you and he will skin you alive and dead.